Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 1 on the May 2022 PUA Paper 2. If you want to check out these solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question reads, the petty cashier for TD Salon was given 1500 on the 1st of April 2022 to start a petty cash book, which will be maintained on the Impress system. Okay, so just a quick word about what the Impress system is. So you see how they give them $1,500, right? So petty cash is to be used to, to spend on small recurrent items of expenditure so we don't clog up the major cash book with, again, small recurrent items, frequently recurring items. Now, the Impress system, how it works is that this amount, $1,500, and it could be any amount, $1,200, $1,500, $100, $100, whatever amount. The, when you spend out of petty cash, you're supposed to get a receipt or what we like to call the bill. Right? So that little piece of paper or big piece of paper is proof that your transaction happened. It shows what you spent the money on, when you spend it, well, well, the merchant, who you bought it from, what date, what time, what you bought, how much it cost, all that stuff, right? So at any point in time, the total of the money left in petty cash and the expenditure via the receipts, the total of those two items must give you back the impressed amount, which in this case is $1,500, right? So that's just a very brief word on what the impress system is. Now, it says here, the analysis columns are provided in the petty cash book for stationery, cleaning supplies, and wages. So let's just take a quick look at the petty cash book they gave you to use. Okay, so they have space on top here to head it up. It says page one, you have a receipts column, a date column, details, total, and then your analysis columns, which as they said, is for stationery, cleaning supplies, and cleaner's wages. Now, let's get back to the details. Now, during the month of April 2022, the following transactions occurred. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six transactions. In addition to the start of the petty cash book, the 1500 that was put in on the 1st of April. Now, what do they want us to do here? Use the petty cash book form provided on page five to record the transactions for the month of April, total balance and rule the petty cash book at the end of April, and then record the entry in the petty cash book on 1st of May to replenish the petty cash fund. Okay, cool. So let's pull up our petty cash book. All right, so this is my little version. So headed up TD Salon, petty cash book. So EOM is my shorthand for end of month, right? 30th April, 2022. So I've recreated what they've given you, right? So receipts, date, details, total, payments across here with analysis columns for stationery, cleaning supplies, and cleaners wages. So the first thing we are going to put in is where they tell you here that the petty cash here was given 1500 on the 1st of April. So that's going to be put in in the receipts column, right? 1500 how much you got, when you got it on the 1st of April, and then details as in where did the money come from? It came from the cash, or if you prefer, you can put cash book, right? Uh, so that's the first item in terms of what actually happened in the cash, petty cash book for that month. Now let's take a look at the transactions. On April the 1st, we purchased mop buckets brushes and dusting cloths for 180. So in which of the analysis columns will this go? Cleaners wages, cleaning supplies or stationery? So I don't think buckets, brushes and dusting cloths are stationery. That will go in the cleaning supplies column, right? So you're going to put 180 here, same 180 in the total column. You're going to put cleaning supplies and the date. Now most people like to go from left to right. I like to go from right to left, right? To me it seems a bit more intuitive. How much should we spend, right? And the total here, what did we spend it on and when did it happen? All right now, again, it doesn't matter if you go left to right or right to left. Once you put in the correct information in the correct place, you're fine. Now, the next transaction, April 12th, bought copy paper and pens for a total of $365. So, copy paper and pens, that's definitely stationary. So, under the stationary column, you're going to put that $365. That's also going to go in the total column. What did we spend it on? Stationary. When did we spend it? 12th of April. Nice. On the 14th now, cleaner was paid wages of 250 for a fortnight. Well, that says cleaner's wages. So that obviously is going to go in the cleaner's wages column, the total column, what we spent it on, and when did we spend it. Next transaction is on the 15th of April. We bought envelopes, computer ink, and staples for 178. That's clearly stationary. So we're going to put that in the stationary column, 178, in the total column as well. Details will say stationary, and the date, of course, is the 15th of April. Next, we bought cleaning supplies for 261 on the 18th of April. So cleaning supplies, so that's going to go in the cleaning supplies column. 
Um, let's see, so 261 there under the total column as well. What do we buy? Good and supplies on the 18th of April. Lovely. Next, last transaction, April 29th, we pay the cleaner's wages 250. So we put that under the cleaner's wages column, total column, and then cleaner's wages is the details. Now, when we total up each of these columns, right? Cleaner's wages gives us 500, 250 plus 250. Cleaner supplies 180 and 261 gives us 441. And stationary 365 and 178 is 543. And when you add up all the expenditure, you get 1484. Now, there's a, there's a cross check here. What I mean is that this 1484 can, is supposed to be the total of this column as well as the expenditure items from each of the analysis columns. The total expenditure, sorry. Right, so when you add across, you're supposed to get 1484. When you add down, you're supposed to get 1484. If you don't, something went wrong somewhere, right? So we total it. Now we have to balance it. What does that mean? The balance in this case can be taken to mean different things. One of which is how much do we have left? What's the balance in the account? Well, if we started off at $1,500 and we spent $1,484, we're going to be left with $16. I simply subtracted the amount spent from the amount I had initially. Right? That gives me $16 and I'm going to put my total there. And of course, I'm going to bring my balance down. Right, Balance brought down on the 1st of May, $16. And it said to record the entry to replenish the petty cash fund. How do we replenish the petty cash fund? We put back the amount needed to go to the impressed amount, which is $1,500. How much do we need to put back? We need to put back exactly how much was spent, which was $1,484. So we're going to put that there. And that's it for this part of the question. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so part B says use the ledger account forms provided below to post the totals from the petty cash book at month end. Enter the account titles, assign numbers to each ledger account. All posted entries should be completed with the appropriate posting references and cross-referencing details. Right, okay, so the account they give you, it doesn't look like a regular T account. I mean, it does. It's just a, a lot more lines. So it looks like a teeth account as opposed to a T account. Uh, I don't know. I just prefer simplicity, but again. Anyhow, so the account number, that, so now that's not something they often have you put, but it is something that's very important for your cross-referencing, right? So what are we going to do here is the three analysis columns that they had in the petty cash book, the stationary, the cleaner supplies, and cleaner's wages. We need to post those totals of expenditure to, to each of those accounts, right? Okay, so the first account I'm going to do is the stationary account. You'll notice the name, the account name. Now, I just put GL00XX for the account number. GL because the stationary account will exist in the general ledger. GL, general ledger. And then 00XX, I just put the Xs so you guys can put whatever numbers you want. It could be 0019. It could, it could just be 1. It could be 5, right? Um, this is just the, the little style I like, right? Anyhow, all we have to do is put the total amount spent on the stationery from petty cash on the debit side. Why the debit side? Because when you spend money on an item, you have to debit that item. You always debit where the value goes, all right? Now let's take a quick peek back at the petty cash book there. So the stationery column totaled 543. So all we have to do is on the debit side, we put 543 as the amount spent. Now PCB 001 stands for petty cash book, page one. 001 is page one. The details is petty cash, where did the money come from that was spent on the stationery? And the date is just the end of the month because it's just an end of the month posting, right? And that's it. That's all you have to do. There's no balancing off to do, right? That's it. So the next account is cleaning supplies. So if we take a look back at the petty cash book, the cleaning supplies column total 441. So all we have to do is just like with the three stationery supplies, stationery, sorry, right? On the debit side, you put the total amount spent. The folio is the cross-referencing thing, PCB001, Petty Cash Book Page 1, and the details, Petty Cash, right? Of course, the date because it's a month end posting. Uh, and again, I put GL00XX because you can put whatever number you want. I would advise GL so you could um, identify what ledger the T account is, right? Cleaner supplies is an expense, so it should exist in the general ledger. And finally, we have cleaner's wages. Let's take a quick peek back at the Petty Cash Book. Cleaner's wages totaled $500, so we're going to put that on the debit side, as with the other two items. Total amount spent, other account affected, right? Uh, where the money came from, and, well, the date, because it's a month-end posting, right? But well, there's just one small part in part C. Let's take a quick look at that and wrap it up.
Okay, so in part C, the owner of the CD salon has asked you to prepare and sign the check to be given to Thierry Francis, the petty cashier, to cash at the bank for the purpose of replenishing the petty cash fund on 1st of May 2022. Use the form below to prepare the check for this purpose. So they're giving you a nice little interesting form here. So Caribbean Bank PLC, High Street, anywhere from here. Okay, this line here is for the date, pay to. So normally when you're paying, when you use a check, you're paying somebody. And the person or company's name goes here, right? Because we are simply using the cash to withdraw money from the bank to replenish the petty cash fund, the detail that will go here is simply cash, right? And the sum of, well, $1,484.00, you put the figures down here and you sign. So I'm just going to pull up that solution, um, the fill-in solution, and then we're just going to call it a day, right? Right, so as you can see, I've recreated it here. So we have Caribbean Bank PLC, High Street, New Town. 1st of May, that's the date, pay to cash. Now the dash or line here is a bit of a safety measure. So nobody could like, let's say, scratch out cash and fill in their name, right? Uh, 1,484, or you could put 1,484 dollars and zero cents, right? And again, I put a dash there. So, I mean, I'm not sure how successful somebody would be trying to steal 99 cents, you know? And then, of course, you put the amount in figures. So the figures have to match the words. And it is put, well, you don't literally put the phrase your signature, but you sign your signature there, right? And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the May 2022 POA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I will get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you might find some interesting POA handouts. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.